Today, we're going to create a schedule that automatically calculates the volume of a mesh. And as we change the mesh, it's going to automatically update the volume that's associated with it. Let's jump in with a practical example. So in my 3D, I'm going to go to our little cube here. Our little earth cube is made out of a mesh. It's one meter by one meter, and you guessed it by one meter. This means it's one meter cubed. If we were to say, bring this out another one meter, we'll type in enter. This should automatically update us to two cubic meters. Let's just shuffle around our 3D a little bit, just to tidy things up. But you might be wondering, how do we set up a schedule like this? And it's actually pretty easy and straightforward. We'll just go to our project map, go on down to schedules, and we'll click and create new schedule. From here, we'll call it volume calc. Sounds like a good name. Now volume with an E and we'll go okay. Now I've already created one of these. So let's skip a little bit of the legwork and check out what the criteria is so that it picks up all the elements that we want it to. But first off, we want to make sure the element type is a mesh because the mesh is what we use to create the topography of a site. And we're also going to want that element to have an element ID containing the words existing earth. I'll show you why this is important. Let's just go okay and enter it back into our 3D. We'll go to our little cube of earth. Now you'll notice in ID and properties, it's got existing earth written in. If I didn't have this written in, it wouldn't pick this up. And this is how we can choose which items show up in our schedule and which ones don't. So let's go back to our schedule. We'll go to our scheme settings. We'll want to make sure it's a mesh and the element type contains the text existing earth. Now let's do this from scratch. We'll change this to mesh. We'll add criteria. We'll go ID. We'll double click element ID. We'll paste in that name from our mesh and that's got us sorted for the criteria. So that actually outputs these numbers here. We'll want to go into this lower section here. We'll go add fields. We'll type in volume net, which matches up with what we set up before. We'll type in OK. And there we go. We've got our new schedule. Now to adjust our schedule, so it's a bit tidier, let's bring out the border a little bit. We can even change the scheme up here. So we'll just go scheme earth lock. Now that text is a bit too big. So we'll just drag that one on out a little bit. And that's pretty much us sorted. So to get this onto our layer, we right click and we go save you and place on layer. And we'll place this one on. We'll take off our drawing title and we'll resize this just so it's a bit bigger. There we are. Nice one. Now the cool thing is, let's say we take this and we duplicate it. A second one, let's say two meters apart. Ah, and we go into our schedule. We'll notice that nothing's really happened, but this is because the crop hasn't been set to automatic. So if we go to the frame, frame to drawing, there we go. We've got it in just below. And we'll do the same for this one as well, fit to frame. So we've got both of these shown up. Now let's say we want to differentiate these two items. Let's call this one new earth. We'll hit enter. We'll go into our schedule. Now it's not showing that other bit of earth anymore because it falls outside of the criteria. So what we need to do is copy the ID. We'll go back in through to our schedule. Go to the one we were just setting up before. We'll go add criteria. We'll go ID. We'll click or. So we'll make sure that it's existing earth or the element ID contains new earth. We'll click OK. And now it's picking up that volume. But so that we can actually tell which one is which. Let's add one more little criteria. Let's go into our schedule settings. We'll go add field. We'll type in ID. We'll double click element ID. Let's drag this one just above our volume and we'll go OK. Hey, there we go. Now let's drag this out a little bit further. There we are. Nice. So we've got our element ID and it points to the volume as well. One last cool little trick that we can do. If we go back into our 3D, let's say we wanted to cut some of this earth and we wanted to find out how much approximate earth we're cutting. I'm going to reduce these back down to one meter just for sake of simplicity for the example. I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Let's go 2000. I'm going to change this materials just so it stands out a little bit more. Let's go aluminium. Now, if we intersect it with our existing, say 500, so that should half its volume. And that means the volume would be one meter cube. Let's see what happens. Let's go to our schedule and we'll find that it's still showing the volume, but let's give this a new name, call it cut so that it doesn't show up in our schedule anymore. If we take this earth and we do a solid element operation, we call it the target. We call the aluminium the operator and we go subtraction and we go execute. And let's say we hide the aluminium. So now we've got half the block that we had before. Let's go into our volume calculator and we'll notice that it's even updated in the schedule, the volume of the block with it cut out. So if we think forwards, we can see how this could have practical application, finding out the cut and fill associated on a site.